All right, so this is the final chapter of our series. And what we're going to take a look at is how to drive particle simulations using audio. Okay, so this is the final result. So to get started, Okay, what we're going to do is uh, I'll just take a geometry folder and I'll create a create a chop network. So the audio file that I'm using is from the YouTube music library and I extracted like a 10 second piece out of it. So I'll upload that with the training so you can use it. But I'll also put in a link to the full audio so that you can download the full thing if you want. So the first thing we want to do is we want to bring in our audio file. Okay, so uh, what I'll do is I'm going to split this pane top bottom and I'm going to switch this to viewers and motion effects and then go back to your chop network and then take a file node and the file node will allow you to import like WAV files or MP3s as well. So this is an MP3. A wave is better, but an MP3 is okay as well. Okay, so we'll just come in here and I'll open up, you know, there you go. So this is my, I'm seeing two tracks because it's, I'm guessing it is stereo. So you're getting left and right. And now I also want to be able to play it. So what you want to do is you want to come down here to your playback controls and you'll have the audio panel. Okay, so click on that, click on scrub and we'll keep it to mono. And you can either pick up a file or you can pick up like a chop uh, network. Okay, so just click here and I'll come to OBJ chop and I'll pick up the file. And you'll be able to see it. So now if I play it, like switch on real time and if you play it, you'll play back the audio. All right, so let's do a fairly simple setup. Now, a small confession, I don't understand uh, the technicalities of audio. So a lot of this was just guesswork and then watching some tutorials on uh, on YouTube. The, the final result I wanted was to try and extract like three different frequencies from the audio so that the particles would emit differently for every frequency. Like that's roughly what I wanted. Okay, so to get started, let's take a delete and I'm going to delete one of the channels. Okay, so if we come in here and this will have two channels, so we'll get rid of channel one and see, so this is this is channel zero. Okay, then the next thing you want to do is uh, we want to get like an animated uh, you know frequency out of this. So to do that, you can use a spectrum. Okay, and this is roughly, let me see how much this is. This is about 250 frames, yeah, 251. So let's set our timeline to 251 as well. Yeah, so the entire audio will be there. Okay, so just plug in spectrum and yeah, turn this on. And if we press play, so you'll see the, the audio track kind of go through. Okay, but what we want is we want it to be like stationary in one place. So you can take a shift node, which will allow you to sort of, you know, keep it in one place. So just take a shift and uh, set the, like this reference start position is fine. The unit value, you keep it to absolute. And what that should do is if I press play now, like turn off the spectrum display, but there you go, see. So if we like zoom in here, press H. Yeah, see, so we can see the whole thing playing through. But what I want to do is maybe like offset it a little bit. So it comes somewhere in the middle. So I can just take a little bit of an offset and just, you know, move it sideways to about there. Okay, so it's about 0 0.015 should be okay. Yeah. You know, so we're getting all of this. Alright, so now the only thing is I want to limit this down because this is, you know, going pretty high. So what I can do is I can take a limit node and we can set it to loop 
and 0 to 1. Okay, so what you should get is, so you will get this, so press H. Okay, now the final thing to do is I want to resample this because this has quite a few points. We might want to reduce that a little bit. Like if I press D here, this is okay, but uh, you know, maybe we can just adjust it a little bit. So take a resample. Like if you have too many points or too little points, now by default resample will go extremely low. So take the sample rate around 25,000. Yeah, so this is okay. Okay, now what we can also do is we can trim it a little bit because this is going like there's a lot of stuff in here that like beyond the two mark there's almost nothing happening see most of it is here so what I can do is I can take a trim uh, let's do it before the resample and I can just trim the end so what I can do is I can probably get it to around two yeah, I think that should be okay. Yeah, maybe 2.5. Okay, so this is good. So all of this is done. So the only thing left now is let's just rename this. So we'll take a rename node and I'm going to rename this from Chan 0 M to, we'll just call it move. Okay. And then we'll set up a null. So we'll just call it out one. Okay, so this is done. So you'll have this thing called move. If this is too dark and you want to see like a brighter color, if you come to the common area, this will be there in every node, like every node has a common, this thing. So come to the common tab and you can change the color from here. So if you want it brighter, you know, you can see it from there. All right, so we've set up our basic, you know, chop network. So in order to just very simply visualize it, I'm gonna take a line. Okay, so let's take a line. I'll push it in the X direction. And uh, this will have a fair few points. Okay, like if we press here, so we have about uh, 1500 samples. Okay, so we're about 1500 samples. Okay, so let's just come in here and we'll set this to around, let's do around 2000 points. Okay, the length is fine. Okay, then I want to set up, I want to set up an attribute. So we'll do an attribute called move. What I realized was that uh, maybe it's a bug, but transferring this value directly to like the, uh, let's say the Y axis of our points somehow doesn't work like it causes issues. So what I realized was that it, if I transfer it to like a dummy attribute and then transfer that attribute to the Y axis, that works. Okay, so that's why this slight, you know, roundabout turn is happening. So now you can take a channel node and the channel node allows you to bring in the, uh, whatever channel you want from the chops and modify an attribute. Okay, so uh, what we want is we want the channel scope is move and the attribute name is also move. So that is convenient. And then uh, let's click here and we'll pick up out one. Okay, and if everything is fine, like you won't see a warning sign anymore. And then let's just take a wrangle and I'm going to set it to like at p dot y is equal to at move. And if we press play, there you go. Now, another thing we can do is let's say if we want to do like a visualization of the left and right channel. Okay, so let's do one. Let's take this. I'll move it to the side. And what I can do is uh, let's come in here. So we deleted one of the channels, right? Like, right now if you look here like if i press h so we have the left and right but we deleted the right channel like let's say this is the right channel so what i can do is i can duplicate this do control c control v this will be chan zero and then all of this we can just copy paste so control c control v and i can come in here and plug this 
and rename should happen from it will be called channel 1m okay the rest is the same so what we should get is uh, let's say if I just duplicate this whole thing and this will be out 2 and what I want to do is just take a transform at the end of this and just rotate it to the other side so 180 and if we merge them together we should have a left and right channel right like if I come back into my chop network I should be able to see it anyways like I'm going to turn off the file node so we have these two let's see if we can see the difference but there you go see We can change the color of one of them to maybe like a pink. See, so we have the left and right channel. Okay, so let's use this much to affect our particles. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to take a sphere and we'll set it to about 2000 points. So what I can do is I can take a polygon. I'll set the frequency to about 15. Okay, so 15 gives me about 2200 points. Uh, let's do 14 uh, yeah 1900 that's that's okay okay so the first thing is I want to set up the velocity in the normal direction so I'm going to take a wrangle and I'll set it to at V is equal to at N okay so this will make sure that my velocity is pointing outwards the second thing is I want to bring in a lot of this from here so I'm just going to take, uh, you know, like both of these do control C control V. You can copy the same thing and just put it in here, but I, I'm just keeping it as a separate node. Okay. So this brings in our move into this, but what I also need to do before that is the point order in this is a little weird. Okay. Because it sort of bases it on this triangulation. So what we want is we want the point order to go in the y axis. So take a sort and set the sort to y axis. But what that will do is it will start it from below. Like the zero will be like down there. Okay, see the zero is here. So instead of that, we will just reverse it. So the zero will start from top. Okay, so that is good. Okay, so all of this is done. Now what I want to do is I want to multiply the move value with the velocity okay so based on the move value the particles will move so what we'll do is we'll just take a wrangle and i'm going to set this up and i'll do a, a at v multiplied by equal to at move and then let's multiply it further with another channel let's call it intensity yeah so we'll get like an if we want to push it out further we'll get like additional control and okay then i'm just going to take an add and i'll get rid of all the polygons so just do like delete geometry but keep points okay and then take a pop network so take a pop network let's also do one thing i'm going to set up another wrangle and i want to color the particles based on speed so i'm just going to set that up you know beforehand so let's do f at speed is equal to length of at v and then we can take a color node like I'm just setting these up beforehand set it to ramp and call it speed and then we'll also take an alpha so we'll take an alpha let's call this alpha I'll set this to alpha and we'll set it to ch ramp and we'll call it fade and based on speed Okay, so all of this is done, like we've done it beforehand. Okay, so now let's come in here to our particle network. And the first change would be to change it from scatter onto surfaces to points. And then we'll get it of constant activation and keep the impulse count to 2000. Yeah, so you'll get this. And then I want to get the birth down to one frame. We don't need to change anything. If we just view this, you'll get that. Okay, so if I 
come out here to my color what I should get is let's do one thing let's make it uh, let's make the range 0 0.05 okay and we'll also take the alpha and I'm going to set it to like it's the ones that are not moving are like almost transparent okay. and then it's visible and then even some of the fast moving ones are slightly less visible okay. and I can set this to two tone okay so what we'll get is that and let's set this to yeah I think that's okay and let's make it brighter so we'll make it about two okay so this is what you get and then what I can do is we can duplicate the whole thing you know so I can just take all of this you can do shift L and I can duplicate from here like from the channel so I can just take all of this do control C control V and what I need to change is this will be out two. and then let's just take a transform and you know move it to a side and we can merge these together so we should get like left and right channel you know working Yeah, if it's calculating and playing the audio at the same time, it looks a little weird, but there you go. You know, you get, there's enough of a color difference in there to figure out, you know, like there are two different channels altogether. Like, or what you can also do is let's do one thing. Let's take the sort, like we'll bring it out. I'll bring the sort here. So this one will be reversed and this one we won't reverse. So this will come in from below and then we'll recalculate. So you'll get this. And we could probably affect the alpha, like let's make this zero altogether. And if I don't move this, if I just keep it to zero like that, see, so you'll get Okay, now uh, let's do one more variation in this. So this is left and right channel. But what I had done for my file was uh, I was trying to extract like bands. Okay, so different bands for different frequencies. So I'll, I'll just give you like a basic idea of how I did that. And I'll attach this file as well in there. So uh, you can kind of go through that, you know, as like an exercise. It's nothing overly complex. It's the same thing, just a minor addition in there. So what I can do is I can come back into my chop network and uh, let's go back here to the lines. Okay, let's keep it to this one. Okay. And uh, yeah, come in here, we'll turn that off. So what you can do is you get something called as uh, a pass filter. So what a pass filter does is it allows you to extract a specific range okay like you can do uh, a high pass or a low pass like I can just start to cut off areas see so if I if I look at the actual uh, this thing and not you know like yeah so what I can do is I can start to cut off like the high areas see or I can do a low pass sorry this was a high pass so I can do a low pass and say okay you know like I want like, you know, which area do I want? Now, the problem is I don't really understand audio, so I'm not entirely sure of what I'm doing. But it, it allowed me to sort of just extract specific pieces. Okay, so I can take, and what you can do is if you want to get a middle range, you can do a band pass. Okay, so a band pass allows you to just extract, like maybe if I just want, you know, like this area. Okay, and then uh, maybe I want something from the middle and then something towards the end. Okay, so what I can do is I can just like take all of this and just duplicate it. So take this, do control C, control V. So what I should get is like, I'm seeing the change happening over there, which is good, but let's, let's just see it here. 
So see, so this doesn't really have like the drum beat coming in. Like the drum beat is, is gone completely. Okay. And then, so let's say, uh, I'll keep this. This is out three. Yeah. And this one, uh, we'll change it and let's try to go slightly higher. Uh, let's take the line as well so we can see the result. So this is out three. Yeah. And let's keep it like, I don't know, let's try to play this. Yeah, see, so now we have just have the drums in this. Okay, and then, uh, so you can do stuff like that. And then if you want, you can make it like stronger. So you can increase the pass gain. And uh, let's do a third one. So do control C, control V. And let's get the line to yeah, out four. And let's try to go higher still. So, So I don't know how high you can go. We can actually go pretty high if we want. Let's take this to around 30. See, so we're getting like that little sort of like the, I don't know what it's, what it's called, but you're getting like that at the end. See, which is not coming in prior. We're still getting the drums, but we're getting a little bit of extra stuff as well in there. Yeah, so this is just the drums. You know, like, if we can see it here, let's just change this color to a yellow. And then this one will change it to, I don't know, pink. Okay, so let's just turn on all three. So what we should get is, see. And what I can do with this one is I can probably like jump it up to 50. Let's try to go higher. I don't know. Let's try to go to about 5,000 and 3,000. Yeah, and let's get this down to 40. Like this one, let's let us go back temporarily to uh out three so I can just see the drum beats yeah which is here so I can probably yeah I think that's the drum beat right so this is yellow okay so this is the drum beat so let's just adjust that and see what we get Yeah, so we get a little bit of the guitar as well in that. Let's try to go to, I don't know, 20. No, 20 is too much. I think 10 is okay. Yeah, so this is the first one. Okay, which is just like, you know, towards the beginning. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. And this is picking up the absolute ends of it. Okay. So now what I can do is I can take my spheres and let's keep the transform. Okay. Like we can come back here and what I can do is I can take, so this is out one and this should be yeah, so we have out one, out three, out four. Okay, so this this should be out like the same one. So we'll we'll keep it to reverse, and this will be out three, and then I'll do control C, control V, and this will be out four. And what we'll do is I'm going to move this to around two point five, and then this will be five 
and we'll merge these and let's change this color from yellow to I don't know let's do a blue so if we come back and if I just you know let's play this back and see what what it's doing see so we're just getting that okay. and then with this one we're getting the middle band see when the drums come in and then this should be the absolute we're getting the drums because the drums are pretty intense but we're also getting like the below range over here like what we can do with the last one is I could probably increase the intensity a little bit so this is the last one okay so let's uh, yeah let's take this pass and we'll make it 50 yeah okay that's going to be a little intense but let's see what what we get yeah so if we merge everything together we should get something interesting like what let's modify the first one as well uh, what I'll do is I'll just take the pass I'll bring it down to five so we'll just get more emission from the top yeah okay so just as a final thing uh, I made a small addition in my file which was I tried to use the same thing to affect like a noise okay so a pop force I was affecting the amplitude of it uh, using the same channel so what I can do is in order to do that I'll just come in here let's take the fourth guy and this is relatively easier okay so I can just come back to the pass let's get rid of all three of these okay let me just save this file and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to directly apply a resample okay so I'll take a resample here which will give me you know something like that uh, increase the sample rate to around 250 yeah so we'll get something like this and then take a take a limit and we'll set it to clamp and 0 and 1 so we'll get that okay so what I want to do is I want to use this to affect our uh, noise frequency okay or actually affect the noise amplitude now this is too low that's the only problem like this is just happening between like 0 and 0 0.05 okay so just take a math node and I'm just going to take the multiply range and just you know jump it up till it's I don't let's let's try to multiply by 50 yeah so that takes me up to what uh, no that's still less let's do 200 yeah so we want like a fair bit so it gets really noisy yeah I think this is good and then I can just take a let's take a rename again and we want to rename this from Chan 0 let's just call it frequency and then we'll do another out so control C control V so this is out 5 okay so let's come back to our first one here let's jump in over there let's do one there. I'm just going to lock it to this yeah so we'll just see this okay let's just uh, let's just come back to the chop network once yeah turn off all of these guys so this is the one that we want like we want frequency okay so let's come back to the pop network and I want to do a couple of things like firstly I only want the noise to affect the moving particles like not everything so what I'll do is I'm going to create a, a group of just the fast moving particles so we'll call it fast I'll preserve the group and this is inbuilt so you can just do enable and do fast particles so it's saying speed greater than one but uh, our particles aren't moving very fast so we'll do speed greater than 0 0.1 and then uh, take a pop force and the pop force will affect the fast particles and we want the amplitude to move based on this so just click on this name like this frequency thingy 
and just drop it into amplitude and do relative chop reference. Okay, so out five frequency. And then I'll give it a little bit of drag. So let's just take a drag. So we'll take a pop drag. This will also affect fast. Actually, it doesn't matter, but yeah. And then let's just play through this. So what we should get is, see. So what I can do is, uh, let's just come into pop force. I'm gonna lower the swirl size and maybe increase the roughness a little bit and lower the pulse length so it moves pretty fast. And I want to adjust the color a little bit. I'm not happy with this. Uh, let's try to go to green. I don't know. Maybe green would be better. Yeah, I think that looks nice. So there you go. Okay. And then you can, you know, repeat the same thing for all of them, which is mostly just a repetition, but, uh, you know, just duplicate this and, you know, apply it to all the particle networks. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. So this is how you can use uh, audio to affect particle movement. Like you can do a lot more stuff with it, but uh, yeah, this is like a simple enough example where you can do like different uh, visualizations for left and right channel or you know picking out frequencies and having emissions based on that and then also affecting parameters using audio okay so a whole range of stuff that you can do there is a lot more that you can do like if you especially if you understand audio like or if you have a background in audio you can do a lot more like for me i don't have a background in audio so i don't really understand most of it okay so i just kind of go with whatever I see and then you just sort of play around with it to get a result. Okay, and what I'm also gonna do is I'm going to add in the original file because the only difference between this and that is that this has the noise applied to all three. Like we just did the noise for the first one, but in my file, the noise is applied to all three. So you can just go through it, you know. The only thing you'll need to change is uh, the math node that we applied and the intensity that varies for each one depending on the graph that you're getting so you just have you might like need like a multiplication of a thousand or two thousand otherwise the amplitude gets too low like you won't even see the noise showing up but beyond that like we pretty much covered everything yeah and that brings us to the end of our entire training series so as i said in the beginning the idea with this was to just go through a whole variety of examples. I'm very sure you can do a lot more, but uh, just at a basic level, go through as many variety of examples. So you get a little more comfortable with the Houdini particle system. And you also get an idea of what all you can do with it. So in regards to like just how to use audio or how to use particle forces for rigid bodies or you know, how to drive particles using volume, velocities, and just a whole range of stuff. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I hope this was useful and, you know, that you learned something from it. Uh, as usual, if you have any questions regarding this training or any of my other training videos or anything in general regarding Houdini, you can uh, write to me via email or you can send me a message on Instagram or Twitter leave me a comment on YouTube, Vimeo. I don't know how many people use Vimeo nowadays. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, anything that is preferable to you. So uh, once again, I hope this training was useful and that's pretty much it.